We are now in the second part of our two series, The Role of the Rich and Wealthy in the Advancement of God's Kingdom. I have entitled this presentation, Temporary Riches and Wealth for Well or Woe. So, let's continue what we have. The rich and the wealthy, there is prospect and retrospect. Let us remember Abraham. Abraham was first rich unbeliever, wealthy person called by God to obey and serve him. God promised him to him to be a great nation, blessing him, and his great name would be he was also blessing to the others. Those who bless him would be blessed also. All the families of the earth. He was to be a model for all rich and wealthy that God wants to follow for advancing his work of his kingdom. Not only spiritual blessing, but material blessings. With the conditions that he made by faith. Abraham believed in the Lord and he counted to him as righteousness. Genesis 15:6. God said, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. Genesis 17.1 In response, Abraham obeyed my voice, keep my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. Here is a man of God whose background is totally pagan. The worship all the gods beyond the river of Euphrates. And Mesopotamia. But God, that was his model. Now let's go to the New Testament. Because I have discussed in the first part in the Old Testament. Now let's go. Let's look at to the millionaires in Jesus' time. The millionaires at the time of Jesus are the tax collectors. The general Jewish populace at the time of Jesus were looking at the tax collector with stigma and considered him as unclean since they are allies to pagans, betrayer of Israel since they serve Rome. Much more with religious experts and leaders, the scribes and Pharisees. Thus the common images of tax collector grimly negative. They were evil, Greed, deceitful, for the charge more than what people owe. Therefore, judge already of no chance of entering the kingdom of God. The people were so mean to these millionaires at that time. So almost the same thinking today with the unchurched, rich, and wealthy people. But this view is not the whole truth. Rich people are misjudged, misunderstood, maligned, and many are condemned. Matthew 5, 46 says, But if you love those who love you, what reward do you? Not even tax collector do the same. Huh? For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has demon. The son of man came eating, drinking, and they say, look, Gluten and wine, Bible, are friends of tax collectors and sinners. Here we see even the Lord who joined with the tax collectors because he loves everybody. Because he was the creator. And all the sinners are his creatures. But now, what happened? The religious leaders. Why are you a friend with tax collectors and sinners? Okay, what he did. But if he refuses even to her church, let him to be like a hating tax collector. So tax collectors had a very bad image. When the scribe and the Pharisees saw him eating with tax collector and sinner, they said to his disciples, How is it? That he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners. They have forgotten that Jesus came to find where is the lost, the sinner. On the other side of the picture, 
There were surprising evidence that many tax collectors have big hearts for the gospel of the kingdom and will serve God with all their hearts. I will tell you later on who are tax collectors, why they are called tax collectors. Then tax collectors also came to be baptized when they heard the preaching of John. Many. And said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more what is appointed for you. Luke 3, verses 11 and 12. Bitter that religious people like the scribe and Pharisee. When all the people heard him, even tax collector justified God, having been baptized in the baptism of John, but the Pharisee and lawyers rejected the will of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. Look. Beautiful pictures. Because they had been already misjudged. They are already condemned. Very difficult to the enter of heaven. But look, they are lining in the preaching of John the Baptist. And that's why we cannot see, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, understand. We should never understand why Jesus did not. Because they listened to John. Converted millionaires enter heaven first. Wow, the shocking. It's not the righteous who are scribes and Pharisees. Then all tax collectors and sinners draw near to Jesus and hear him. And the Pharisee and scribe complain, this man receives sinners and eat with them. And what Jesus said? Jesus said to them, to the religious leaders who are hypocrites, as surely I say to you, tax collectors and harlot enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and harlots believed him. When you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. Matthew 21, verses 31 and 32. This incredible picture at the time. And so he spoke this parable to some who trusted that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went to church. One Pharisee and one tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself, God, I thank you. I'm not like other men, extortioners and just adulterers. Even in this tax collector in my side, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the tax collector standing apart of would not match, raise his eyes to heaven and beat his breast saying, God be merciful to me. And Jesus tell them, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Human standard cannot be equated with heaven's standard. So we think people, tax collectors, candidates for hell. Who are the tax collectors? They are not the BIR. No. They are not the IREs in the US and other countries. No. Those who receive, receive our tax. No. Tax collectors or publicans from Latin publicanos or telones in Greek were upper class of society. Put it in the modern parlance, they were the millionaires. Tax collectors are not the same with BIR or IRS as an agent of government to collect taxes. No, they were not employees of room. They were auctioners or buyer of taxes. In the time of Jesus, they were tax collectors. And they could have also a role of managing, of overseeing Roman projects under their contracts, supply military personnel, collect customs, poll tax, and others. They were contractors choosing among the upper class people, but not necessarily a ruling class. So, most tax collectors are buyer of taxes. So tax collectors, most of them, if not all, are already rich in their respective business because, because before coming to become a tax collector. 
Republicans won and air their office of position by public bidding at auction. Either that person would name the amount that he could collect and then he would pay that amount to Rome. For example, if I'm a tax collector and then this whole town, I want to know the bidding of the tax. Then I will bid. If I get the highest bid, I will pay that to the emperor of Rome. Because he was a wealthy. That's why we find them. People were irritated. The religious people were irritated. Because, you know, human eyes easily to judge and condemn. They did not know that what, how they, how measure others, it will be measured back to them. Rich and wealthy disciples of Jesus. Rome treated the money as loan paid interest back to tax collector. If a tax collector collect more than the original amount he got, he keep it. The tax collector has a risk also. If his collection is less than what he expected to pay back to Rome, then the tax collector paid the amount to Rome and he collect and he wants it. It was a millionaire business. Other tax collector collect exorbitant taxes. And many become more rich and wealthy. So Matthew and other not named tax collector follow Jesus. It is clear that Jesus called the rich and the wealthy in his kingdom. The same invitation is offered to God those who are rich and wealthy today. There are rich and wealthy sinners that Jewish society at the time abhorred and hated. Especially the publican or the tax collector. But some invited by Jesus and they listened and obeyed the Lord's word and become his disciple. And they in turn a great asset to God's work. Among others, name was Levi Matthew, the son of Alpheus. He invited Matthew to follow him in his gratitude to Jesus. The record says, now it happened when he was dining in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners sat together with Jesus and his disciples, and there were many, and they followed him. Mark 2, 15. Many tax collectors become Jesus' follower. That's why if you read the Bible, you understand they have a treasurer, the bad man, Judas. Because Jesus chose the 12, but there are many, many wealthy and rich tax collectors who were his followers. And many did not read that in scripture. Because just like others, they judge them. But Jesus says, the tax collectors will enter first in the kingdom of God. Those tax collectors who love and follow Jesus. Meaning to say, the rich are not difficult to enter into the kingdom of God because they have a role in the advancement of God's kingdom. And so, when the hearts are converted, wallets also and bank account go together. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi. And he called him. So we see here, people complaining. We need to understand. The scribe and the Pharisee were guilty by these honest practices under cover of their sacred calling. Zacchaeus publicly confessed his humility of human heart, longing something better of the things of this world. The Pharisee and scribe, the judge, the tax collector, but they were guilty. Just imagine long prayers, they travel, they molest the money of the widows in the clock, in the name of religion. So Zacchaeus was a rich man. He was a cheap tax collector. 
He was not a tax collector. He was the chief. Meaning, he was really a rich person. The problem was that his stature. Short. Short at the time, as I researched, about five feet. And he was passing to Jericho. And he went to see Jesus. He heard of him. And so the best thing, because people dislike him, ostracize him, already condemn and judge, he was helped by a sycamore tree. So it is the sycamore who helped, not the religious hypocrites, the scribe and Pharisees. And so we know the story. Sakio lives in the border city of Jericho. The name Jericho means city of palm. The best and the most fertile part of Judea were the finest and best palm trees in the ancient world. Besides, Jericho was one of the wealthiest city. It boasting on Herodian palace in the city. Sakios was a cheap tax collector. It implies he hired other tax collectors under him. He could be rich without cheating, but it appears that he had done it. Or his hard collectors could have charged on him. So we read the story of the seeking person for a higher purpose of life rather than getting riches and wealth. When Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a cheap tax collector. He was rich. He sought to see Jesus who he was. But he could not make it because of the crowd. He was short of stature. So he ran and climbed in sycamore tree to see him. Just imagine. Just to see him because he cannot get near. Because people will push him. But when Jesus, according to the story, of Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. When Jesus was under, he looked up and he said, what happened? There is a man. And Zacchaeus, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down. Today, I must stay in your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. When, his, when the people saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. It's easy to condemn the rich. Then Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, look, if I have, if, uh, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. Just imagine that commitment. If I had taken anything, any more false accusation, I restore four fold, four times. And Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house because he was also the son of Abraham. So the son of man came to seek to save which was lost. Beautiful story. Incredible story. He can afford to pay four, four times because he was so rich. Money to him, riches to him, nothing compared to the joy of seeing eternal connected with the creator of the heaven and earth, his Lord and his Savior. Zacchaeus has a deep longing. Zacchaeus was exactly opposite to the rich young ruler who had a hardened heart. He heard the preaching of John the Baptist. He impressed his mind, exact timing was passing in his territory. There was intense longing to see the master. He was rejoicing the plagues of restitution of fraudulent practice. His heart was warm by Jesus' love and interest on him. He found the new master, not his treasure and his wealth. The scribe and Pharisees were deep in sin because even Jesus in their estimate have shared the sin of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus testifies Zacchaeus' sincerity when he declared, today salvation has come to this house. Jesus was seeking Zacchaeus. He found him, and Zacchaeus found great peace and joy, the greatest wealth that he would not lose. Even all his earthly temporal riches will be lost. 
Zacchaeus was a wealthy tax collector. What he did with his wealth? Before faith and conversion, cheated citizen, abused the poor. But after faith or conversion, he repented, make in restitution. What is the lesson? Ill-gotten gain must be repaid. God saved and changes us all the way down to our pockets and banks account. Let's go to the third, second person, Joseph of Arimathea. He was asking Pilate of Jesus' body. Here is a rich man. Joseph of Arimathea appeared on the scene after the Lord. He was a silent follower of Jesus. Now when the evening had come, came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself also became a disciple of Jesus. But silent. The silent follower, John Record, Joseph of Arimathea, disciple of Jesus, but secretly because of the fear of the Jews. But after the death of Jesus, he became publicly bold and went to Pilate and asked the body of Jesus. He personally did it that a rich would not do. He had a linen cloth wrapped in the body of Jesus, used his private tomb near Mount Calvary or Golgotha or Skull. It is interesting that I went to this place. And I went to Jerusalem. This is not a picture of Mount Golgotha. You can find a skull picture. But now, now, they cannot touch because that is rock, solid rock. But now, it is a term, bus terminal. It is outside the city of Jerusalem. Why am I interested with that? Because I took picture. Not only I took picture, but I went to the grave where Jesus was laid. Because... This is the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, where Jesus tra traditionally was buried. So I went inside. I stayed there with awe and wonder that my Lord and my Savior was buried in this tomb. Now, it fulfilled the prophecy. Matthew explained the body of Jesus was laid in a new tomb, which hewn by a rock. At the time when you have a private cemetery, private tomb, you are wealthy. Because by digging alone in a solid rock, it means money, time, effort. So the rich man's Joseph was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was of highest rank. What, what he did with his wealth? Prepared his own funeral, donated his tomb for the burial of Jesus. Forsaking the treasure of earth kingdom, God will be rewarded. Our position are to be used for the glory of God. What an honor before God the Father and His Son, the King of the universe, a rich man provided a place of royal burial. His foxes have holes and birds in the air have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Luke 9, 15. But what an eternal honor and glory when the prophecy was fulfilled by Joseph that they made his grave with the wicked, but with rich at his death because he had done no violence nor was deceit in his mouth. Isaiah 53. You know, when you are crucified on the cross, they will allow you to die. No need to be buried. That's why it says, they made their grave with the wicked. But here comes a rich man high-ranking officer who take the body of his master and his lord. So he was a given a royal burial. Joseph of Amati. Note that Joseph of Arimathea's remarkable character. He was described as good just man, member of Sanhedrin council who stood against that Jesus be sentenced to death. He was waiting the gods of God's kingdom. He was a secret disciple. He had the courage to ask the governor of Jesus' body and prepared a linen cloth, wrap his body. This linen were expensive, but it was worn by the priest, provided a tomb that never been used. He was rich, yet his riches was equal to his sterling character. 
rich in everything before men, and above all to God. So there are many rich people who have the same motive in life to serve others and God, but don't know how. Let's go to the third. Nicodemus. He was a higher ranking. He came to Jesus at night. Why? Fear of the Jews. He was of high. Uh, he was a ranking officer. And he was he had the most coveted title, teacher of Israel. And so he came to Jesus and interviewed in the evening. Nicodemus had a big name in Israel. He held high position of trust of the nation, highly educated, earned the noble title, teacher of Israel. John 3, verses 1 and 10. Rulers of the Jews, Pharisee, so strict and pride himself of his good work. He spent his riches in the services of the temple. By the virtue of his birth as Israel, he regarded himself sure place in the kingdom of God. The pride of this man deterred him to believe the preaching of John the Baptist. As member of the Sanhedrin, he did not consent that would be sentenced, Jesus would be sentenced to death. But his ministry was so special for the praise and honor of the master's day. He was just like Joseph of Arimathea. The scripture record Nicodemus who first came to Jesus by night because of his position and rank after the death of Christ came also bringing mixtures of myrrh and aloe about 100 pounds. These are expensive perfumes for embalming which along with a name rich women from Galilee who bought spices and fragrant oils. Luke 23.55 Made such wonderful fragrance of the tongue of Jesus. Distance did not matter, nor material things. Hearts are drawn to God's love. They express a lavish love for Jesus. Nicodemus used his wealth in sustaining the infant church and that the Jew expected him to be blotted out at his death. So we have Nicodemus, Joseph, women of Galilee. They have riches and wealth. Hearts given to the Lord of glory. These believers live faithful Christian life in addition in enjoying the richness and wealth. So it is important to note the example they left for us. These people were wealthy. Give generously. Their actions illustrate responsibilities placed upon the rich and the wealthy because of how they had been blessed. This truth echoes through eternity. The word of the Lord, Jesus says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35. But you cannot give and share what you have until first you give yourself to God. Because God asks us first our life. Why not give your life now to the Lord? Let's go to a pagan centurion. A question was asked, how it is possible for a pagan Roman officer, a centurion would build a synagogue for the Jews? Did this Roman centurion have enough means to shoulder all expenses? A Roman centurion during Jesus' day was known for will discipline, good conduct, truthful, straightforward, loyal, courageous, such admirable character earn a highest position of a centurion. A centurion means captain of 100 soldiers or more or less. The lowest rank centurion salary was three to five times compared to ordinary soldier. The highest centurion received 10 or more times salary. These were pagan leaders of the Roman legions. Therefore, the question above should be answered was yes. It happened when Jesus was in Capernaum. This place was international highway from Damascus, Syria to Jerusalem and Egypt and to Mediterranean Sea. So this Roman centurion built this. And I was able to visit that. It's a privilege. 
Here comes a pagan, high-ranking officer with noble character, even he was pagan. Just imagine, shoulder all the expenses for the synagogue, not of his own religion. It means to say that he had a problem with his God and his religion. And so he devoted his time and effort of what he earned because he believed that the God of the Jews was really the genuine God. Let's read the account. And when he concluded all the saying, in hearing a people, he entered Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. When he heard about Jesus, he sent the elder to the Jews, pleading him to come to heal his servant. I like that. Just imagine, he was rich, high-ranking, yet has concern with the servant. It tells about the heart. So he sent the elders of the Jews to find where Jesus is because he need really that his servant will meet. Just imagine that. He can find others. So when they came to Jesus, they beg him earnestly saying that one home was deserving. For he loves our nation and he built a synagogue. Now, just imagine the prejudice of the Jews in Capernaum was lost. The racial discrimination that they are really the special called ones of God. Here comes the pagan who built a synagogue. So their prejudice, their judgmental attitudes was erased because such expression of giving the advancement of God's work was an indication of a love of a person to the Lord and his cause. So when Jesus went with them, he was already not far from the house. The centurion sent his friend saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself. I'm not worthy that should enter my room. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. Just imagine that. Others are maligning Jesus. <laughs> I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof. Neither even myself not worthy. Did you see the utterness, helplessness? Of being a sinner, seeing this Jesus. But say a word and my servant will be healed. For I am a man also under place, under authority. Having soldiers under me. When I say to one come, go and he goes. And another come and he comes to my servant. Do this and he does it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turned around and said to the crowd that followed him. I say to you. I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well and had been, that had, who had been sick. The centurion character was extraordinary. In many ways, slaves are bought and mistreated and abused, but this officer was different. Even the Jews who were hostile to Romans could testify that he loved Israel and his God. By building a synagogue was expensive, required sensible amount. He was not considered by elders as unclean. His faith unequaled and rivaled. It was incredible challenge to those who claim people of God. Here we found works of faith and works of love. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. The elders' face backfire on them. This is Fagan's faith. The centurion admitted not worthy. Centurion did not pride himself to Jesus that he built a synagogue for them. He did not discuss. Not like the Pharisee. $100 trumpet. It was the elder who told the Lord. He felt not even noble in his house to deserve to receive Jesus as a guest. Not worthy under my robe. He met Jesus because he himself not worthy. So exactly opposite to the many people who are rich and wealthy and yet have no concern of their soul and other people. He saw himself worthless before the Lord. 
although he had already have a worthy works for providing house of prayer, praise for praise for the honor of the name of the God of the universe. There are many unchurched rich people more than willing not to be known or recognize what they contribute for the advancement of God's kingdom. While others paraded their contribution, they already received the reward, as Jesus said. This is one. I went to this place. The ruined synagogue near Simon Peter's house in Capernaum. Jesus had been in this synagogue. And it becomes a monument. So these Roman officers heard about Jesus. He did not witness, witness Jesus speaking, performing miracles, but so admirable character for even as a high-ranking official confessed that he was not worthy. To come to the Lord, what a humble and tender person. So interested that his servant would recover while other treat servants to be sold in the market with harsh abuse and cruelty. He had no prejudice, no racial barrier. His faith in Christ had no question that he could heal the servant. Convinced that the religions of the Jews was superior to his, by building a synagogue, he respect and honor for the service of God. The Roman officer taught Pagan brought great blessing. He loved for the Jews. He speak the quality of faith and love. Because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the words of God. Romans 10, 16. How many rich and wealthy people have the same spirit and attitude like this pagan Roman officer who believe in God? Many. There are those who are not parading their works of faith and love for the cause of God's kingdom. Jesus commended his faith, his work and love. A pagan who brought praising to God's people. May your tribe increase and continue for the praise and honor and glory of God. What matters? Faith and love of God and his people in his heart. Let me discuss one personality. Philemon. Philemon was a true to his name, affectionate, closely associated with philanthropic, a person seeking to promote welfare of others, generous and benevolent. Philemon was a convert of Paul. He was a well-to-do person whose wife was a Pia, son, yeah, son Archippus, also a minister. Philemon was rich. And so, fellow Christian had a church in his house. That's incredible. Known for his love and faith to God and to believers. The word sharing comes from the Greek word koinonia. It is a business term for partnership for sharing position. What is amazing with this man was his love. Hearts of saints had been refreshed by him. Philemon verse 7. Also, Paul's heart was refreshed. Refresh my heart in the Lord, verse 20. Here's come a rich man who was a repressor of God's church to an apostle, to church members. What a sterling character. Repressor of the church. He was a repressor rich man. His word speaks of many positive things in Christian characters. Other rich Christians are stressor, wanted to be treated differently as a special elite by the virtue of their status in society. Sometimes stern, untouchable, they look down to the poor, hard to please, stingy, wanted to be consulted, recognized always. But Philemon, his character was different. Shoes that rich Christians should not be aristocratic, socially inclusive. It is the highest honor before God to serve, Jesus had said, serve and give his life. To be rich with material things as a token of God's blessing, one must be rich also with God. By sharing or using them for the advancement of God's kingdom, 
If the rich and wealthy have the state of mind and put into action of life, riches and material things are not hindrance in entering the kingdom of God. Many rich and wealthy are not thinking this way because they need tangible people in the highest class of society who recognize and acknowledge their acts of benevolence. But Philemon was not. You know, we read the wonders of healings taking place in New Testament church. But the greatest miracle is when naturally self-seeking, materialistic men and women begin to sell their property and share it with everyone, their hardened asset. Now here is a true miracle. How many people you know who are willing to renounce position of their material needs? Property belonged to its owner, but the owner did not claim exclusive right of his property. Material blessings then are not simply for us to enjoy, but for us to share with others who are in need. They are tangible means of expressing Christian love and unity of believer to demonstrate a life-transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's look at the timeless truth of the widow's might. Remember that Jesus and his disciples were in the part of the treasury of the temple. And the rich were putting their gifts into the treasury. But Jesus noticed a poor widow putting two mites or coins. And he said, truly I say to you, the poor widow has put in more than all of this out of their abundance, have put their offerings to God. But she out of poverty has put in the livelihood that she had. Luke 21, verses 1 to 4. Many who were rich put in mats. Mark 12, 41. Okay? But why Jesus did not commend these givers? Because it cost them almost nothing compared to what they have still. Probably for the sake of showing others not to God. But the widow cost everything. It was hardened, but the heart of love, motive, count most to God. And so, she believed the cause of God. So by faith, she had a heart to give, although the amount is very insignificant, it was her last, yet believed that God used it would bless others. That day, other gifts made a noise as they jingle into their receptacles. But the widow's might were heard in heaven. This is where many rich and wealthy fail. God sees what men Overlook. God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 7. You can be a cheerful giver when you know what has been received for the cause of God is received in heaven, according to Hebrews 7, verse 8. So, let me come to an end. We find rich people in the New Testament. I'm not done. We're going to part three. There were so many rich people who responded to God's call in the advancement of his work in his kingdom on earth. Because they have understood that the temporal riches and wealth is passing away and it should be placed into the hands that is secure for eternity because they receive it from the giver the owner of the universe, and they are so grateful with their hearts and return back for his praise and honor and glory. So, either for woe or will, rich and wealthy, be rich and be wealthy also in God in the advancement of his kingdom. This is the message that the Bible, it is not hard for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. When the heart is longing something better that riches and wealth cannot satisfy. Looking things because material things, temporals, do not stay forever. Only a good character that is blessed by God. May you rich people and wealthy join the call of God. In working the advancement for his kingdom. And you will see how important is your role. Significant is your role in finishing God's kingdom on earth. 
and it will end with praise and glory when Jesus come and rewarded you with eternal riches because you trusted in him. This is my prayer.